When your children are in the shops with you, mommy buy me this, daddy buy me this, you say yes. If somebody wants to borrow money from you, you can't afford it, you say yes. Somebody invites you to a party that's going to cost you a lot of money because you have to transport yourself, you have to buy a dress, you have to do makeup, you know you can't afford it, you say yes. Welcome back to my channel, The Bulletproof Life. It's me, Ronkyo Deomumi. And again, I'm delighted to have you here. I'm so happy to see you popping by to watch this video. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you 10 mistakes you are still making with your money. And these 10 mistakes are keeping you in debt. They are preventing you from saving. They won't let you invest. And they are keeping you from growing wealth. Now, before I go ahead to share these 10 mistakes you are making, can I ask you to please take a minute to press the like button for me so that YouTube can share this video with other people like you. If you have not subscribed, please do it by pressing the red button on your right. Thank you very much for that. So let's get right into these 10 mistakes that you have been making with your money. You probably know the first mistake already because I bang on quite a bit about it. And it's that you are failing to budget. You are still not budgeting your money. You think budgeting means you should scrimp and you should suffer. I'm trying to ask you to live a sufferhead life. I'm not asking you to do that. I'm asking you to have a plan for your money because that is all a budget is. It's a plan for your money. A plan for how you will spend your money. So why are you still failing to budget? That's a mistake you are making. You need to stop failing to budget and you need to start budgeting properly. There are apps to help you budget and I will always add them in my description. They're in the description of almost all my videos. So you have no excuse. Those apps are there. I have a budget and saving book you can buy on Amazon. Also, there's a link in the description section. Again, you have no excuse for not budgeting. You can even do it in an exercise book. You simply have to divide the pages into two, the left side for your budget and the right side to track your expenses. So failing to budget is the first mistake you are making. The second mistake you are making is that you don't have an emergency fund. You've not put aside any money for emergencies. I get asked this question a lot. Okay, how much should I be saving? How much should I put aside? You should be saving 20% of your income monthly until you have built an emergency fund. An emergency fund should cover six months of living expenses. Your emergency fund is how much you need to survive, the barest minimum you need to survive for a period of six months, at least six months. So you need to put aside that emergency fund. When you don't have that emergency fund, emergencies will happen. Then you will start running a water skelter. Then you will start dipping into credit cards. You will start taking loans. You will start going after payday loans. You will start going after money that you shouldn't go after. You will divest your investment, break it up so that you can have access to funds. And it's because you don't have an emergency fund. Fund. That's why you save this month, you unsave the next month. You save this month, you spend it the next month. It's because you don't have an emergency fund. Trust me on this. Once you have an emergency fund, even you, you have peace of mind. You will have a certain kind of peace of mind. And please don't say you don't have any money to save. There is a whole video on how to save when you don't have money or when you think you don't have money. There is a whole video on that. So if you are struggling to build an emergency fund from your income, you need to watch that video where I talked about how to save when you have no money. Remember, for you to build that emergency fund, you need to save 20% of your income and you need to save it before you start spending. And you also need to budget. So those are the first two mistakes you are making now. The third mistake you are making with your money is that you don't have a debt repayment strategy. You are just paying off your debt anyhow. You are paying off your debt based on who is writing me letters, who is chasing me the most. Who do I want to avoid? Uh, which debtor is stressful? Uh, which one is small? Let me just pay small here, pay small there. Or you're simply paying a little bit on everything. It can't work like that. You need to have a debt payment strategy. You need to know if you are paying off the smallest first, and then once you do that, you move to the biggest. Or if you are going from biggest to smallest, or if you are going from the most expensive to the least expensive, you need to have a debt payment strategy. Again, I have a video on my channel where I talked about debt repayment strategies and how to choose which one is most suitable for you. So you need to stop paying off your debt in a haphazard way. You need to start using a debt repayment strategy. Still talking about debt, you need to lower the cost of your debt. 
a lot of people just pay off their debt as is but you need to reach out to your lender and have a conversation about lowering the cost of your debt you need to reach out to them to say look i'm struggling to pay this off i want to pay it off i want to reach a payment agreement but i need you to lower the cost of my debt that is a mistake you are making assuming that you don't need to lower the cost of your debt or assuming that you know you can just keep paying it off without lowering the cost and this makes it impossible for a lot of people to pay off debt because your payment monthly is simply the cost of debt they're just paying interest they're just paying off interest they're not paying off the principal you're not paying off the actual money that you borrowed you are paying off the little interest or the big interest that the lender has tacked on your debt so you need to consider lowering your debt which brings me to the next mistake you are not consolidating your debt you need to put all your debts together in one pot. A lot of people have their debts scattered on, in so many places. They forget to make payments. They forget some debts exist at all. They are not giving attention to these debts. Or they become intimidated because they just have six different debts hanging around. So they are intimidated by these debts. What you need to do is to consolidate your debts into the cheapest platform you can into the cheapest basket that you can consolidate it into. And that means combining all your debts. That might mean taking on a new debt that has a lower cost and using that new debt to pay off all the other debts that have a higher cost. And then you are left with just the new debt that has a lower cost. So not consolidating your debt is a mistake you are making and you need to stop making that mistake now. You need to consolidate your debt and also lower the cost of your debt. I mentioned earlier that not budgeting is a mistake you are making and some of you watching this video you are patting yourself on the back you are saying well I budget sometimes that is a mistake budgeting irregularly is a mistake budgeting when you feel like this month you budget next month you don't budget the upper month you don't budget and then you budget again you go off for six months and then you come back and you budget that irregular budgeting is ruining your finances it's not putting you in the driver's seat you are like somebody driving a car and right on the highway, when you're in the driver's seat, you take yourself out of the driver's seat while the car is moving and you go into the passenger side and ask somebody in the back seat to come into the passenger, to, into the driver's seat to start driving your car. And then when the person in the back seat has driven the car for 10 miles, you push them out of the driver's seat again and you get into the driver's seat and you continue. After another 10 miles, you jump out of the driver's seat. You go back into the passenger side. You ask the person that you pushed out into the back seat to come back into the driver's side. You're going to have an accident. I mean, imagine somebody actually does that while driving a car. You will consider them crazy. You would either consider them crazy or suicidal because they are driving and they're endangering their lives. They're endangering their vehicle. They're endangering the lives of the passengers in the vehicle. And everybody who depends on your income is a passenger in your vehicle and you as the person earning the income you are the driver so every time you don't budget you are putting somebody else in the driver's seat of a moving vehicle you are jumping out of the driver's seat of a moving vehicle and handing it over to whoever else is willing to take it on that is dangerous i hope this very vivid analogy that i have given to you will help you understand why you shouldn't budget irregularly you need to budget consistently every single month because budgeting keeps you in the driver's seat of your own finances the other mistake you are making is that you are still spending credit some people tell me ah i'm paying off my debt i don't even understand okay this debt is not going anywhere i'm paying it it's not going anywhere i don't know what's happening but what they are doing is that they are still spending credit you're paying it and spending it you're paying it and spending it of course, it means you are not paying it. Because if you pay it and spend it, you are still in debt. Your debt is not moving anywhere. You need to stop spending credit. For you to come out of debt, you need to stop spending credit. You need to put a full stop to spending credit and start living within your means. Start living within what you earn. Initially, it's going to be really hard because you have expanded your living expenses and your lifestyle to fit your income plus credit. And now I'm asking you to take away the credit. So you're going to be left with just your income. So initially, it will be hard. But I promise you that this is the way to come out of debt. This is the way to end a credit living lifestyle. So you need to stop spending credit. Stop coming in my inbox and telling me, my debt is not going anywhere when you are still spending credit. Come in my inbox and talk about your debt when you are no longer spending credit. It's very important that you stop making the mistake of spending credit while trying to pay off debt. Paying the minimum is another one. 
a lot of people do this you have credit cards and because at the time you took the credit card they've told you that you only need to pay five percent or five pounds whichever one is lower or five percent and twenty pounds whichever one is lower and so you start paying twenty pounds monthly on a card where you are owing three thousand pounds think about it twenty pounds monthly three thousand pounds i mean we are looking at 600 months or is it 60 months we are looking at 60 months for you to pay back three thousand pounds i mean you're never going to pay it back because 60 months is literally five years you want to spend five years paying off three thousand pounds now if you could actually pay it off in five years that won't be a problem but you see that 20 pounds you are paying half of it is going to interest or three quarters of it some people they will pay 20 pounds monthly and 17 pounds of that is interest so you are basically paying just three pounds out of three thousand pounds and you expect the debt to disappear it's not going to disappear because you are basically not paying it at all so paying the minimum on your debt or paying the minimum on your credit card is a big mistake you are making i will not help you to get out of debt it will not help you to have savings because you are always going to be servicing debt and once you are servicing debt it ruins your finances especially if you are servicing debt with more than 30 percent of your income then you have really nothing left to do anything with so paying the minimum on your credit card or debt is a big mistake that you need to stop as soon as possible you need to stop right after this video you need to go and change your direct debit so that you are paying more than the minimum on your debts there's a video on my channel where i talked about mistakes couples make with money and this particular point i mentioned it in that video and it's avoiding money talks with your partner this is a mistake you're making that is ruining your finances if you're avoiding money talks with your partner your partner might not know how poorly you are doing with money how much you're struggling and so they we continue to spend as if there's money in the community post at the same time your partner might be the one struggling and ruining their credit but because the two of you are not having that conversation you can't support each other you can't help each other out of this merry clay that you found yourselves in and a lot of people like to believe that you know my finances are different from my partner's finances my money is my money your money is your money let everybody walk their own lane you need to watch my video where i talked about the mistakes couples are making with money you will understand that your money is not your money their money is not your money you guys are connected as a couple you are financially connected especially if you are living together you are connected so you can't avoid talking about money with your partner it's important that the two of you are on the same page where money is concerned not having financial goals is a big mistake you're making right now if you don't have financial goals that is a mistake you're making right now that needs to stop you need to have financial goals if you don't have something you are saving for why are you saving there's no motivation you will not be motivated to pay off your debt you'll be motivated to save you'll be motivated to invest because there's no reason to do so so you need to have financial goals do you want to grow well for your pension? Do you want to grow well so that you can buy a house? Are you saving up so you can go to um, postgraduate school? Are you saving up so that you can relocate to another country? Are you saving up so that you can own property? Are you saving up so that you can start a business or you can fund your business? You need to have financial goals. Some people might even be saving up for their children's education. The point is have financial goals when you don't have financial goals it's very difficult to save it's very difficult to want to budget it's very difficult to want to invest it's very difficult to want to even pay off debt because there's no reason so not having financial goals is a mistake that is keeping you in debt it's a mistake that is preventing you from growing wealth and this brings me to the last mistake that is dealing with your finances and preventing you from growing wealth and paying off debt and it's saying yes to everything. Yes. When your children are in the shops with you, mommy buy me this, daddy buy me this, you say yes. If somebody wants to borrow money from you, you can't afford it, you say yes. Somebody invites you to a party that's going to cost you a lot of money because you have to transport yourself, you have to buy a dress, you have to do makeup, you know you can't afford it, you say yes. Somebody wants you to give them money to do something oh they're your very close friend you can never say no to them but you don't have the money so you empty your account and your savings and you go into more debt you give them the money because you can't say no saying yes to everything is a mistake that you need to stop making you need to draw the line you need to have boundaries even when people are squeezing the juices of your sympathy and they are sitting on your emotions and playing with it and playing you like a tambourine so that you can give them money you need to learn how to say no for the right situations you need to know when to say yes 
and when to say no. If it's not working for you, say no with a smile. Say no with a smile so that your finances can improve. Stop managing perception. Some of you are managing perception. You don't want to look poor. You don't want people to think you don't have. But you don't have. You don't have. So why do you want to pretend that you do? So saying yes to everything is a mistake. You need to start saying no to things. Even if you visit very wealthy people or you go to very wealthy people for support or help, sometimes if your stories are not clear or you are not clear on what you want, they will say no. Sometimes your stories are even clear, but it's not convenient for them. It's not working for them. They will say no. And then you go out and say they are wicked. But you, with your own finances, you are saying yes to everything. And don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you should not be kind. I'm not saying you should not be generous. I'm not saying you should not be a giver. You should be kind. You should be generous. You should be a giver. But you need to learn to say no at the appropriate times. Sometimes it's yourself you need to say no to. You need to say no to yourself when you're saying yes to shopping. You need to say no to yourself when you want to buy those extra things you don't need. When you want to buy those extra bottles of perfume, you need to say no to yourself. So sometimes the saying no is even to yourself. But the most important thing is to stop saying yes to everything. I have now shared with you 10 mistakes you are making with your money that's keeping you in debt and impacting your finances. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found it impactful. Please don't forget to smash the like button for me if you have enjoyed it. If you haven't subscribed, please do so by pressing the red button on your right. When you subscribe and you press the bell, you'll get notification every time I share a new video. So you can come here and connect with me. If you go through all my videos, you will know that I love to connect with people who connect with me. I love to respond to comments. I love to have a good chat in the comment section. So please be a fan. Join the Bulletproof community. Subscribe and press like. Until my next video, you take care of yourself and keep living that Bulletproof life. Bye-bye.